John Gilstrap. John, good morning once good again. Good morning. So wonderful Happy to, to have here. you here. You get the whole coast scene to yourself, which also gives you door duties during the breaks. I know. I know. It gets very warm in here um, it does. while we're talking, and then it's actually pretty chilly in the in the hallway. So We have roughly uh, 1,607 computers all doing something With in the With four the miles time. of cable. <laughs> that's a, All hidden I, under the table. That's the, I bet there's more. <laughs> if, you, if you took, like, spaghetti and just threw it all over the floor... That would be 10% of what the wiring is underneath this console where I sit. Yeah, on uh, Tuesday, I guess it was uh, the, the mogul was in here. Things were not working the way they were supposed to, and apparently it spent five hours playing with stuff and mm -hmm. jiggling and plugging and unplugging. It turned out he had to flip a switch. Well, it turned out <laughs> it's exactly, something was unplugged. Yeah. They just had to turn it back on. In studio with Delegate Chuck Kirsten, and I believe uh, the... Um, in the un, in the intro, John Hardy is in that intro. Aren't you and Hardy roomies down in Charleston, Chuck? Yes, we have been ever since uh, I've been in the legislature. Yes. Is that continuing this year? Uh, yes, it will. Now Hardy leaves after this year. What are you going to do for a roomie? Well, I guess I'll be shopping for a roomie. We'll have to see. You know, there'll be some incoming new people. Uh, see if I can find a roomie, and if not, maybe I'll find a different place where I share with somebody else because I'd, I'd rather share than just uh, have it have it by myself. I think. Right, so how does that actually work? Is it like college where you put the little, people put on the bulletin board, I need a roommate, and you have little pull-off tags and stuff? Or? Uh, I don't know. I, I guess probably that if I was shopping, I'd, I'd probably, we, we, we have, the delegates generally have a chat group, mm -hmm. and uh, I'd probably throw something on that chat group, and, you know, if somebody was interested, they'd, they'd contact me. I want to do the roommate draft. Chuck Hurst is the general manager of Chuck's team in, in, the, in the roommate draft and the, the, the delegates who would be like if, you know, Hardy moves out next year, you hang out with somebody who do you, who is like the first round draft pick in the Chuck Hurst new roommate draft? Oh man, uh, man, you put me on the spot there. I am. Uh, yes. <laughs> we ask the tough questions here, Chuck. Uh, you certainly do. Um, as would, your unofficial counsel on this, I urge you to be careful. <laughs> Well, I, I don't know who, who, who the incoming freshmen may be. Uh, I would probably look at, strongly at somebody from the Eastern Panhandle, I think, just because uh, mm -hmm. we, we, we share probably a lot of, a, a lot of values there. Um, well, of, of the people you know and, and work with already, who, who do you think would be fun to live with that you don't currently have as a roommate? Probably, probably Hornby and or Heights would <laughs> yeah. probably be fun. I think that's it right uh, there. That's the house you want to be in. That, that's Animal House right there. That's where you, because I think Coles is in there. Height Hornby. I think, uh, I think Gino's moving in this year. Uh, Gino Chiarelli? I, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. He, yeah. he may be. I don't know. Somebody else might be. I think there's like a fifth guy moving in too. This is the place you want to buck. I think this is where all the fun's taking place. I might be a little bit old for that crew, though. I'm not sure. <laughs> Guys like us, Chuck, we need our sleep. Uh, that's a fact. And and you can't stay out too late because it takes a week to recover. That's a fact, too. Yeah, man. <laughs> the guy who gets up at 3.20 every morning says, guys his age need sleep. We do. <laughs> I don't get it. That doesn't mean I don't need it. Yeah. Uh, Chuck, your thoughts on the LG deal as uh, the news broke yesterday? Well, I, I don't know an awful lot about it. I, I listened this morning, so I learned most, most of what I know about it. I learned this morning from uh, listening to the station here. Um, uh, I'm not quite sure where I'm at on it. I mean, I think it's going to be a, a good positive thing. Uh, I, I think uh, mm -hmm. Gilstrap here, I think he kind of pointed out, and, and, and I, I puzzle with the same thing, is you know exactly what are they going to be doing. Right. Uh, so... Uh, uh, As a thriller writer, I go right to developing the Andromeda strain. A great yeah. movie, by the way. <laughs> it was a good movie. But, you know, what What are those little incubator things? Are they literally incubators, or are they the 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 mm -hmm. hypothetical, or the, the um, uh, rhetorical incubators? And just remember, Soylent Green is people. That's true. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so uh, I think we were all a little confused on that, other than the fact that a, a lot of people are going to move here and or, or maybe already live here. We'll be getting jobs here. Kids coming out of school will be getting jobs here. And they'll go into offices and they'll do whatever it is that LG is developing. You know what? I Without manufacturing I, something at the moment. Yeah, I know I'm, I'm speaking instead of interviewing. But one of the things I think is really cool about this is we're going to be bringing in people for whom education is important. And I think the problems with education writ large in West Virginia Education begins at home. So if kids aren't reading at the right level, it's because reading is not in the home. Mm -hmm. So if we bring in a, a, these, these white-collar jobs, for lack of a better term, 
And with that comes a culture that values education in the home that will, by definition, increase the the test scores and performance of children in, in West Virginia. It'll have to drag the system up. Chuck, you're about to begin a new legislative session here. January the uh, 8th, I think, is the state of the state speech, if I got my uh, dates correct. 10th, isn't it? Yeah, tenth. next Wednesday is yes, the 10th. The 10th. Right. Uh, do you have any inkling as to what the governor is going to be addressing and what are some things that you'd like to see him address? Well, I, I, I don't really know what the governor is going to address. I think uh, you, you, you guys have talked about it in recent shows a little bit uh, about what, what's suspected that he's, he's going to talk about. Um, I'll, be, I'll be sitting there anxious to hear what he has to say. Uh, sim- simply because if certain things are mentioned, that, that kind of helps drive something mm-hmm. through the legislature. And, and, and I would be really, really curious to hear something about some sort of locality pay. Uh, that's been a big issue here, as, as we all know. Uh, it remains a big issue, and it still remains a pretty tough nut to crack down there. Did you hear Craig's thoughts on locality pay? Yes, I did. And he said provided he doesn't die next week, he thinks it'll happen in his lifetime. And I, I would be inclined to agree with that. I, I, and I think I've said it here on the station before that I, that I believe we're going to get there. I'm just not quite sure when, when, it's going, when we're going to be able to accomplish it. What is the biggest hang-up, Chuck, from the delegates you've spoken with when this bill gets discussed annually? Well, uh, they just seem, I, I, I guess, they don't, I guess they don't, they, they look at it that, whatever something costs in the eastern panhandle it costs the same in their district and they do, i don't think they really truly understand the differential between our you know say say berkeley county and say uh uh, uh mingo county uh, and housing data doesn't show them on paper that there's a big difference in the cost of a house or rent here well i'm i'm sure that they can at least see that uh but I just think that they just fight to get the same thing for the, for their people that say say the Eastern Panhandle would be getting, uh, and, and and it's a tough nut to crack. We're we're getting closer. I, I know the last vote on on uh, I think it was a, a commission to study the issue. Uh, after that vote, there there was a number of delegates that had talked to me that said that they would vote differently the next time. Really? So yes. Because I think the Senate passed that, but the House did not passed the vote for a study, if I remember that correctly. Uh, that may be. I'm not sure. I, I, I remember being in the House, and I remember the vote on it, and we were, I don't remember, maybe a dozen votes shy. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure it was, exactly. It was, it was closer than I anticipated yeah. it being, right? Uh, what are some bills that you had going last year that you hope will be reconsidered this year, Chuck? Okay, the the, the big one that, I'm work, that I am that I want to see happen is, is, is uh, the – basically abolish the open fields doctrine, although I'm not calling it abolish open fields doctrine anymore. What does that mean? Um, It means that law enforcement would be required to have a search warrant to search property, uh, real property. Uh, The Fourth Amendment by U.S. Supreme Court rulings does not protect real property from government intrusion. Protects your home, but not your land. Home and the curtilage, but not your land. Uh, and, and I believe the Supreme Court simply got that wrong in 1924 when, when the doctrine was kind of created. And, and if you look at court rulings since then in the Supreme Court, you have, uh, uh, I think it was 1968, Katz versus United States was another case involving that. And the Supreme Court kind of really pulled back on the open fields doctrine in that case. They, they, they sort of put in, a, in place a test to determine whether that whether your property would be uh, 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 protected, that you had a reasonable expectation of, of privacy. And what the test really was is, is did, did the property owner do something to show that they expected privacy, which would be, say, fence the property or post the property. So uh, in, in 19, I think it was 1968, uh, that kind of changed the open fields doctrine. But then I believe the next one was in 1984. I could be wrong on the date, but I think the next case was in 1984, Oliver v. the United States. And in that case, the Supreme Court went all the way back and full throttle, full throatedly uh, reinstated open fields doctrine to include that nobody has a reasonable expectation of privacy on their property. Even if it's fenced. Even if it's fenced, posted, regardless. Uh, and... Uh, even, even, they, even in their opinion, they stated that uh, 
outbuildings would not be protected from somebody that trespassed and looked in the building and seen something. Uh, that, 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 you know, say law enforcement looked into your, an outbuilding that you had through a window and, and seen you had a uh, moonshine still in there. Well, that would be fair game for law enforcement at that point. Even without a, a warrant for Even suspicion. without a warrant, correct. Interesting. Um, this seems like a random, I'm, I happen to be a Bill of Rights purist, so, you know, I think property is property. Good for you for going for this, but it seems like a random thing to be pushing. Is, is there, was there a key incident that happened that brings this into uh well, focus. yeah, there's there's actually been more than one one. The 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 case that brought it to my mind is the case that was in Tennessee, uh, and that that was uh, uh, game wardens put uh, trail cameras up on a guy's uh, farm, filming where he had a coyote trap set, and anyway, he inadvertently caught a hawk in it, killed the hawk, and uh, they charged him with the crime, and and that worked up through the courts. The latest court ruling on that case, because it was, it was claiming that they had no business being there, and the latest court ruling, because of Tennessee's language on their Fourth Amendment, is a little bit different than most states. Uh, they use the word possessions rather than effects. And the latest court ruling came down that the owner does have a reasonable expectation Tennesseans have a reasonable expectation of privacy on their property. Therefore, that th through through that conviction out. Uh, so, and there's a case ongoing in Pennsylvania right now. There's one also going on in Virginia. This this one in Virginia is rather bizarre. I don't know a whole lot about it, but uh, game wardens actually took the homeowner's trail cameras off of the homeowner's property, confiscate them or just took them or stole them. Uh, and, and like I say, I'm not sure about that one. Um, and along with that, I, I would add that over the years, there are a number of states that do not recognize the open fields doctrine. Uh, and uh, the open fields doctrine, per se, is that open fields is, are not protected under the Fourth Amendment. Correct. Okay. Correct. And uh, of them states, one of them is New York. I see there's Vermont. There's Michigan. Uh, I think Oregon and Washington State, I think. Mississippi. Um and Kentucky just done a little bit of a pushback last year on reining in some powers of the game wardens on in Kentucky. South Dakota done the same, I think, in 20 or 21. Um, so it's, it's, it's not like it's anything new. It's not like there aren't some states that are saying no to law enforcement. You're, you're going to be required to have a warrant if you want to go snooping around on somebody's property. And uh, that, that's the gist of my bill. My, my bill does not stop law enforcement from entering a property if they need to. Uh, but if they're searching, that, that's, that's what my bill stops, would, would stop any kind of a search. Without a warrant. Without a warrant. Without a warrant. So in response to this bill, Attorney Joe Ferretti stated, well, there goes interdiction with landowners growing illegal crops or having meth labs. Any concern about that, Chuck? Well, I, I mean... How do we know they're having meth labs? Uh, is it, I, I would imagine that if somebody's going on somebody's property about a meth lab, they have some sort of knowledge. Or, or, or so get or, the warrant. You're or, yeah, or, or have we just gave law enforcement free reign that, that that's acceptable, that we, we have no property rights? All right, I want to get to the Brad Knoll issue before, before uh, long because that's what we have to do when you're on the program. And that is in regards to Brad's <laughs> big issue, besides no sales taxes, Brad, I got that too. And that is a, a shooting range in Berkeley County. Government moves very, very slow, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Brad's heard that from me for two years now, Chuck. It, it is being worked on, I promise you. Um, and uh, when the range opens up, which I believe we will get a range up there, when it opens up, I hope that you'll join me there on the very first day and we'll, we'll shoot a few, uh, few rounds. I guarantee you Brad will join you. <laughs> and the second day and the third day, too. Now, yeah. on gun issues, I know you, you're a big advocate of the Second Amendment. We, there, West Virginia has constitutional carry. we got campus carry. We have, you know, it's, are, are we where we want to be? Where you, you want us to be regarding the firearms issues? Uh, there, there's some little things yet. I mean, nothing, I don't think anything is really big or earth shattering. Uh, but, but yeah, there, there's a few things. I think, I think, uh, you know, we, we call that constitutional carry. I think if we're going to call it constitutional carry, we should kind of make it constitutional carry to where 18-year-olds are recognized to carry without a permit uh, as well, uh, because that our constitutional carry is 21 and older. Uh, so 
that's a little thing there. Um, there. There's just some little cleanup things here and there. Now, for 18-year-olds, is it just concealed? Or is it, can they open carry? It's just concealed. They've eighteen year olds have always been allowed to open right. carry in the state of West Virginia, as as everybody else, provided they're not prohibited for right. some other reason. We had uh, Joe Ferretti on the program. Oh, it might have been on last Friday, week before that, maybe in his regards to the murder rates in West Virginia being higher since the passage of permitless concealed carry in the state. Have you seen those numbers, Chuck? Uh, yes, actually, well, I, I I heard uh, Joe say that. Yeah. Uh, and 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 I and I uh, done a quick search and and, and I kind of looked at some stuff. What have you learned? Um, what what I found, and this is uh, mothers demand action or whatever. So mm -hmm. they're not favorable. They're not going to put anything favorable out for for gun statistics. Uh, so, but but what I found is nationwide. It wasn't West Virginia. Nationwide, uh, gun violence drastically shot up. Uh, I forget the numbers exactly. Um, uh, homicides in West Virginia, I think, went up around 20-some percent, maybe 20-some percent. However, nationwide, it was way, way higher than that. Uh, and suicide rates, uh, the, same, the same thing occurred on suicide rates. And, and it, wasn't, it was not just the West Virginia thing. It was nationwide that there was a sharp jump. There is a decrease. Currently, the, the numbers that I was looking at, currently the numbers are all starting to fall right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think some of that is, was, was COVID-related numbers from, you know, whatever, from being locked down, not, you know, just all, all the effects from, from the COVID situation. I think some of it was, was that. And by and large, uh, the numbers, by and large, are, are suicides rather than homicides in the state of West Virginia. And in the state of West Virginia, homicide numbers are actually um, part of it because our population is small. But um, a, a little bit of an increase kind of gives you the idea that it's a, been a big increase because, uh, sim simply put, uh, if, if you have 10 homicides, 50 percent of that is five. Mm -hmm. So if you went from 10 to 15, that would be a 50 percent increase. Right, and, and the statistics are all per hundred thousand incidents per yes, hundred thousand. Yes, whether correct. it's whether it's gun violence or traffic accidents. So when you only have one point seven million people in, in in the state, you know, per one hundred thousand, it doesn't take but you know fewer than you know, relatively few homicides or relatively few events of anything in order to be higher statistically because of the per capita uh, calculations. Thank you, Professor. You're very welcome. I, I did this all the time. Did this for a living for 35 years. <laughs> yes, if you guys didn't know, before he was an author, John Gilstrap had a career in firefighting, EMT, safety, and safety engineering, engineering yeah. and accident investigation. All that, all that wow. kind of stuff. Yeah, you didn't know that, did you? No, John? I did not. Oh, he's a Renaissance. Man. I thought he was just a book writer. No, no, no. <laughs> That's all I do now. <laughs> <laughs> now this is his second life or third, depending on how many careers you count on him. Uh, Chuck, your thoughts on on what uh, you know? You know, numbers are numbers, and and stats are stats, and whatever. But uh, one life is one life, uh, especially if it's somewhat important to you. What can the state do to help curb suicides, gun related violence, whether it's suicide or homicide? And the uh, and the mental health crisis in the state that that is certainly not unique to West Virginia. Well, I I think you said a big chunk of it right there in the mental health crisis. Because uh, part of that is the gun violence. Yes, and 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 that plays into gun violence, especially in the, in the suicide area, suicide part of it. Uh, it, it it's just huge. Uh, I don't know what the actual answer is, but but work needs to be done on 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 mental mental health issues. There's no there's absolutely no question. Uh, and, and, and that relates to other issues as well. You know, it probably relates to some kids in school. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it, it's a huge issue. I, I, I don't know what the answer to that is other than trying to get more mental health for people. Uh, and, and also another factor probably involved in that is, and I don't like to say it in a sense, but once upon a time, Many of these people that had severe mental disabilities, they were kind of uh, kept in hospitals, mm -hmm. sometimes not in such good conditions, I guess, is why the hospitals generally got shut down. But uh, since then, and some of that, some of the, especially like mass shootings kind of correlate when, with when we, uh, the increase uh, kind of correlates with when we start, stopped institutionalizing mm -hmm. uh, 
some of those people. So, uh, you know, I don't want to say for sure, you know, that that's cause. Well, let me ask you this. DHHR begins its year being split up into three unique uh, classifications now. So in regards to mental health in the state, we're talking, we talked with Craig Blair a moment ago about uh, a 5% raise, a uh, 10% tax cut that should trigger automatically here with the state's revenue surpluses. Will an effort be made to shift or reallocate or allocate more funds into mental health in the state? How to deal with these issues at the scholastic level and, and for adults? Well, I, I, I don't know the answer to that. I'm sure, I'm sure our health committee people probably are looking at some of that. Uh, you know, and I'm, I'm not on, on, on health committee, but mm-hmm. uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, Delegate Summers and, and Tully are, uh, are, are looking at a lot of those type issues. Uh, so I, I really don't want to try to guess what may happen or may not happen there. Mm-hmm. Um, I do like the idea that the state is still doing well after some pretty healthy tax cuts last year. And uh, we're seeing some growth. I think I was just reading an article the other day, last week, that uh, last year there was uh, 4,000 and some more people moved into the state than moved out. The year before it was like around 2,000 mark. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, we have an older population, aging population, and our death rate is still surpassing what those that are moving to the state of West Virginia. So not really seeing an increase yet, but signs are there that things are kind of looking up on, on that front. And, and I think with um, uh, economic development stuff that we've seen, these big corporations coming to the state, uh, things are going to look up, continue to look up even more. Uh, one one thing that we, one thing that's big with economic development, we don't get economic development if we don't have workforce, if we don't have trained workforce, educated people. Uh, so, um, I do have a question for you from an anonymous member of our audience who is your roommate. He wants to know if you've done anything to address your snoring. He said you sound like a dragon at night. Well. <laughs> I sure knew that was going to be coming one day after the last time. Um, no, I have not. In fact, I think I've gotten a little bit better at snoring. So, uh, John, you need to step your game up a little bit. <laughs> now, this may affect it in the in the Chuck Hurst uh, roommate draft that comes up. This may affect who would want to sign onto the Chuck Hurst team. <laughs> and and actually, maybe I'll move the angle on my bed because my bed is against this wall. John Hardy's bed is against the wall on the other side. So perhaps if I flip my bed the other way and I have my, I'm sleeping in the opposite direction, it won't be quite so bad, John. Direct the north. The you know, way. I think we need to reconsider this whole don't submit questions ahead of time thing. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> That was submitted by John Hardy. <laughs> Chuck, uh, when you when you taking off for Charleston? Uh, that's weather dependent right now. I'll probably make that decision this evening, uh, possibly tomorrow or Sunday or maybe Monday morning. I don't have any meetings on Sunday, so I can I can stretch it out till Monday if need be. Have a safe trip, sir. Thank you.